good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this call. If it's uh, possible for you to um, to open your video, please open your video. It's an absolute privilege visiting with me. My name is Daniel Fonsal, and um, tonight we talk to you with regards to the facilitating of the teaching of hearing God's voice in a small group. And um, this, <laughs> and I, I don't know why, but every week I seem to say that this is one of those great topics. This is one of the topics that make a big difference. And hello to everyone that's greeting me in the chat box. Um, thank you for communicating with us. We really appreciate that. And um, uh, it is important for us to know that you are on the call. Um, before I start tonight, allow me to tell you that you are highly favored, favored, favored by God. And um, thank you for um, being willing to help and assist other people to understand the word, to make the word simple and easy to implement and understand. Because a lot of people know the word, but they cannot live it. And the key is that you and I as a facilitator, we want to help and assist people. We want to make the word easy for people to actually live it and um, to, to always pull in congruent in a congruent way your own experiences into where you're at. That is part of being a good facilitator around the word in a small group. Um, let's pray. Lord, we just come and we commit this little bit of time that we have to talk to people who are willing to go and help and make the word simple and easy to understand, to break it down, and to help people to talk about, to ask the difficult questions and to just talk about the word so that we can be prepared, so that we can be expecting you to talk to us, Lord. Lord, we know that you are talking to us in this day and age. And it wasn't just for Bible, the time of the Bible was written. It is for us for today. And thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that you are talking to us. And make us vigilant. Allow us to hear you. Allow us to be to expect a visit, a visiting word from you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if we uh, thank you, Valerie, for allowing people in for us in the background. I appreciate that. Um, it's always easy to have someone helping. But um, so tonight we talk about hearing God's voice and how to facilitate it in a small group. And um, I tell you, um, in, in history, in, the, in our small group history, we will regularly revisit hearing God's voice. Um, it is one of those topics that you have to, at least once a quarter, have to revisit in a small group. Because it is something that you continually need to, to discuss for people to be expectant to hear God's voice. Because you know what? The average Christian don't believe they can hear God's voice. What do you believe? Just you by yourself. You're not answering to anyone. I'm just asking you. What do you believe? Do you hear God's voice? Do you clearly hear God's voice that you can go and heed it and go and follow it? Because a lot of really active in the word Christians don't hear God's voice. They always want to hear someone else. They always have to go to someone else. They always have to go to someone else to hear on their behalf. And you and I, if we're expectant, and if we understand that God wants to talk to you, if you're expectant of hearing his voice, you will press in and go in and hear his voice for yourself. And the, the key is that we should not take our behavior from the world into the secular behavior, into our spiritual being. Because a lot of people will be in, will in the world and I'm not talking to a specific person. I'm talking in general. And um, I know none of, of the people that I'm talking about is on the call tonight. But the key is that a lot of people will go from one doctor to another doctor to another doctor to another doctor. They always want a second opinion. Always want a third opinion. A fourth. Someone else must give an opinion. The same with people that need help. People that need help in the, in the inner man... In their, in their mind, in their thinking, in the way that they, they live their life, in their being, in their flesh, not, not spiritual yet, but uh, a lot of people will go and they will go find counsel 
at different counselors. They will go and then they will be with this counselor. Then they will go to that counselor. Then they will go to this, to this counselor. And some people are professionals in running from one counselor to another because they never hear for themselves. They want someone else to um, identify the issue and someone else must then tell them what to do about the issue. It's, it's someone else's prerogative. Someone else will be better in hearing what's the, what's, um, the problem and someone else will, must go and, and um, identify, give a name to it because people want names to do things. And the key is for you and I that we in the, in the, in the spiritual don't go copy what we do in the natural. And if you are someone that's, that's going after different counselors, we should not go in the spiritual to different counselors all the time. Because a lot of people in the natural will go to different doctors, one after the other, after the other, then go to different counselors, and they will have a counselor, and the, this counselor will not help, and they go to that counselor. Then they go to spiritual. They pull this to spiritual. Then they want to go to this to this um, pastor. Then they want to go to that pastor. Then they want to go to this prophet. Then they want to go to that, that um, apostle. Then they want to go there. They're always running after people because someone else must hear on their behalf. And it's imperative that you and I sometimes just go sit still and be still with God and press in with the word and go find the, the reference word and go meditate on it to know that God wants to talk to you yourself and to stop follow after people who are higher in the spirit than you, people who are who will hear God better than you. There's no person in this world that will hear God better than you for you. But we just have to go press in and go make the time and go do it. And a lot of time, Christians don't believe that they will hear God's voice. And many a time, I will talk to someone, we will sit together and talk, and I will just ask the questions and ask the questions and ask the questions. And in the end, they will hear that they are doubting the fact that they can hear God's voice. Because I cannot tell you that. If someone say, I don't hear God's voice, they will not come to you and say, you know what, I don't hear God's voice on this. Please talk to me. They will come tell you the issue. And then I will just ask questions and questions. And then eventually they will say, you know what, all I need to do is I need to press in with God because he will answer me on this issue. And I just earlier this afternoon had a discussion with a very good friend of mine who loves the Lord, who really, really loves the Lord, who pressing in. But I don't think he's hearing better than me. I don't hear he will have a better word for me, but I discussed something with him. I found counsel with him. And just by talking with him, getting it off my chest, giving it to someone else to help me listen to this, and in talking to him, I knew this is what the Holy Spirit is saying to me about, about it. So the, the key is that if we just go and understand the different ways that God talked to you and you go pursue that and you go follow that, we will find the answer. And most of the times you will find the answer by just go following your, your Bible. And I just, my apology for speaking directly into the mic, I just reached for my Bible. And I just sometimes grab my Bible and I, I need something. I don't even know exactly what, what it is about. I just know that I, I have that uneasy in my spirit. I will grab my Bible and I will just start because I make notes in here. This is, this is a place where I have relationship with God. And I will just spend time in the Word. And I will just page, page it and I will read it and I will see what's the reference to that. And I will read that. And you know what? It will fall in my spirit what, the, what God is actually telling me in this situation. Because just spending time in the word. And a lot of time, you and I should just go spend time in the word. A lot of time, our first thing that we need to do in a situation is to go find the, the time in the word. Just go on your own. Just go read the Bible. Just go read the Bible. Just go read the Bible. Um, if you don't read the Bible regularly, start with the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just start with that. If you want to start with just one, start reading John. Go read John. 
just go read John. If you want to read something else, go read Song. Just start with Proverbs. Go read Proverbs. Just just read, get into the word. But the, the thing is, if we now go and be in a small group, we have to regularly talk about getting hearing God's voice. We have to regularly. And a lot of times it will not be an evening where we talk about God uh, hearing God's voice. It will it will happen that in the in the teaching someone will say something because in all the different teachings remember the base teachings the the base um, foundational doctrines are always in every teaching that you bring they are base fun, foundational doctrines in and hearing god's voice is one of those foundational doctrines that you and i have to talk about regularly in a small group because there's always new people added to the group there's always new people added to the group but even if you have a whole quarter where there's no new people added to the group, the people in the group must have grown in the expectation of hearing God's voice, in the application of hearing God's voice. And we should regularly go revisit that so that they are aware of it. Sometimes people are not aware of their spiritual growth until you talk about and alert them on something. Sometimes someone will give you a testimony and due to you knowing them, you will unpack their testimony to them and just say, but whoa, 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 just stop. Just yeah, in your testimony, you said that. Do you actually realize what it means? You heard God's voice. N no. It's their testimony, but they didn't unpack it to realize that they actually heard God's voice. They seen God's provision. Sometimes there's a miracle that happened. People will come tell you the testimony but they will not realize that there's actually a miracle in their testimony. Sometimes there's provision. They will come tell you the testimony, but they will not realize there's provision in there. And so hearing God's voice is one of those foundational doctrines that you and I have to alert people to all the time. If someone's got a problem, have you prayed about it? Have you spent time with the Holy Spirit to go and press in to hear God's voice with regards to this? No, I haven't. Okay, let's do that. We don't discuss it. We pray together in a small group. If someone comes with an issue and it's an issue that they're willing to discuss in a, in the small group in the, uh, with everyone present and they say um, what the issue is, have you um, asked the Holy Spirit for an answer on this? You will be surprised how many times people will be honest and tell you, no, I haven't. Because our natural behavior is to go to the next person to find the answer, not for ourselves to go pressing. Because we as Christians don't go back to the foundation of the, of the gospel. Don't go back to finding the answer with the Holy Spirit. We want to run to other people. That's just how the natural world around us happen. We go to people outside. We don't go internal. And you and I in a small group as a facilitator should always bring someone back to their own relationship with God. Whenever they, they come with the issue, they say that you should put on the table, have you spent time praying about this? Yes, we prayed about it. Okay, how many times? How many times we prayed about it? No, but how many times? Because you know what? Sometimes praying about it is not enough. Sometimes you have to be prayerful about it. You have to press in about it. You have to go dedicate a specific time. You go have to dedicate time to pray about it. But then we will say, if they say, I haven't prayed about it. Yes, we prayed about it. Sometimes people will say, yes, we prayed about it. And it will not be in a prayer about it. It will be mentioned in a prayer. Because we have a prayer that's a shopping list. And we mention that in a prayer. Now I've prayed about it. It's not prayed about it. We have to go pray about it. We have to go pray every word, every angle, everything about it. We have to go praying. It's as if I go sit on my dad's lap. And I go tell him, have you ever seen a little, a little boy running to his grandfather? His dad just told him, you cannot have it. But he runs to his grandfather and he jumps on his lap, exuberant, joyful, because he knows if he tells his grandfather what he wants, he will give it to him. That's how you and I should be. And we don't spend enough time on our father's lap. So sometimes I just need to guide the person in the, in the small group back to yourself, your own time in your prayer closet. Just go pray about it. Just go pray about it. But what do we do? 
We don't tell them to just go pray about it. Okay, but let's start now. If you if you have someone that asks you for a word, if you have someone that asks you for, for advice and something, why, where do we start? Not hearing your story and giving you the best answer I can think up of. You know what? I have experience in that. Let's quickly give you the answer. It's the wrong place to start. We have to start with hearing God's voice in this issue because hearing God's voice in your issue is different than hearing God's voice in my issue. When it was my issue, it was my issue because of something in my life of my history and told my, with my relationship with God until that moment. Your situation is different. We have to go find the answer in your situation with where you are. So what do we do? Cool, let's pray. And immediately there you start praying. And then you help the person. You pray, you press in, you ask the Holy Spirit for guidance on this. And then you ask the person in the prayer, you ask them, but what is this about? And they have to pray what that issue is about. But what is this about? And they have to pray what that is about. So that they release it, so that we, we, we speak it into the spiritual realm. So that we release the question, so that we release the situation into the spiritual realm, the real info, not info that I thought I heard you say, and now I pray for you. I want you to release it while we pray together. And as you as you release that, I will jump in and I will pray with it. And I will I will press in and I will push in on that subject, not giving you the answer, push in to get the answer from the Holy Spirit on that area. And we will get everyone in the small group to jump in. And you will see that that prayer for that person will be totally different than you ever experienced in your life. And everyone will jump in and pray about that. And then we send the person forth and say, okay, now you go to your prayer closet and you go do a second round on the same prayer. Go do a second round. Tomorrow we will talk about it. And tomorrow we will at some point have a phone call, a conversation about it. And we will just pick up on it and say, okay, but last night in the, in the small group, what did you experience? What did you feel? What did you hear? When you gone and prayed about it yourself, what happened in the night? What happened, what happened, in, what happened in the night? Did you have a dream? Did you have a vision? Did, did God speak to you in the night? Were you at ease? Did you sleep easily tonight or were you awake all night? Were you not at ease? Just go and get people to hear God's voice for themselves without us giving the answer. I hope you hear what I'm saying tonight. A small group facilitator don't always have the answer. You don't have to have the answer. We just facilitate the Holy Spirit and the person. We just facilitate the communication. We just facilitate the person to go and, and dig in with the Holy Spirit, to go and press in with Father. We don't give the answer. The, I don't have the answer. Because I can tell you what happened when it happened like that in my life. But my situation was different than yours. In the same situation, God wants you to learn something different than what I learned from that experience. I have experience that I can tell you this is what happened. And I clearly heard God say this, which was totally contrary to what the world is telling me. And the facts are telling me. God said something totally different in that situation. But if I had to give you my advice through what I think and my experience in that situation, it would have been 100% the opposite to what I heard from the Holy Spirit. Because it wasn't an answer that I was expecting. That's the key. I truly trust that you heard me tonight. The key is for you and I to send our small group people with the issue at heart. With a prayer, we pray with him, we press in. But please don't try and sort out the answer. Allow the people, the spiritual growth, to go press in and hear from the Holy Spirit. Allow people to hear from Father. Show them how they can hear from God. Teach them how they can hear from God. Remember, the last, the last, the last, the last one is always, do you have peace? God is a God of peace. You didn't hear what I just said. God is a God of peace. The last hurdle, the last thing to get through before you act on the word is peace. Because God will give you peace. Your inner man, your, the spirit in you will be at peace, will be in peace about the situation. 
if it's God truly God's will, if it's truly what God has said in that situation. And you know what? Sometimes it's 100% contrary to what you will have done in the natural. Because God is not bound to the natural laws of this world. He's not bound to what's the facts on this side and the facts on this side, and now he must come up with the best solution to the facts. God is creator. He supersedes any fact on the table. And he can make anything happen for you, regardless of how it happens in the world, regardless of the fact on the table, regardless of the piece of legislation on, on top, regardless of the outcome of the cause, regardless of. God supersedes everything. But we forget that. We want to find the answer in the natural. We want to find the answer for every person. Sometimes you and I as the facilitator must just get ourselves out of the way and just guide the person back to the Holy Spirit. Did you hear God on this? What is God telling you? What is, what is happening in your heart when you talk about this? Sometimes I just have to sit with you and cry about that situation because it is a serious situation where I just have to, as the small group facilitator, just sit and cry with you. And pray with you. And it's not in trana. And, and we pray about this. But we don't have the answer. I feel, I feel the situation. But I don't have the answer. I can hug you. I can love you. I can pray with you. But for now, I don't have the answer. I have to allow you to go prayerfully with, with regards to that. And I will, we can pray again. And we can pray again. And I can remember years ago. I, I'm now talking Many, many, many years ago, I, I think I talk about 2005, 2006. I can still remember with Dr. Frost and Janine. I can still remember us having prayer evenings. We will have loud music playing and a lot of people in the room and some will lie down and others will sit and some will walk. I'm a walker. I always walk when I pray. Some will walk and some will cry and some will shout and some will, some will dance and some will raise their hands and some will... But we had serious prayer evenings. In those evenings, we could hear God's voice. Because people that never, ever heard God's voice on and, and those evenings said, you know what, tonight I heard God say this. And it's not for someone else. It's for you. Because if, if you never heard God's voice before, you will not hear it for someone else. You will hear it for yourself. Because you have to recognize God's voice and have that inner peace for yourself first before you can hear God's voice for someone else. Otherwise, it's your natural man standing up. And we need to die to self. We need to die to have the answer. We are not always the answer. God's the answer. The Holy Spirit's got the answer. It doesn't matter what your situation is. God has got your answer. Jesus has done and gone through that same situation. Jesus experienced that. He's been there. He's been there. And sometimes just knowing that is enough. For you and I to press in to go find the answer with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you heard me tonight. This is a serious subject. This is not an ABC subject. The key is to get the person to go back to their prayer closet. To openly pray. Whenever someone has an issue, don't tell them you will pray. Never, ever, ever tell them you will pray. Never tell them you will hear God's voice. You know what? I will go, go hear from God and I will come back to you. I nearly said something that I shouldn't have. Don't ever do that, please. Pray immediately. If someone needs prayer, pray immediately. Don't tell them I will pray for you. Pray for them. Don't tell them you will pray for them. Pray for them. Just pray. Just pray. doesn't matter where it is. At Bolton Nut, over the counter with all the customers in the shop. If someone needs prayer, that's where we pray. You said you need prayer, that's where I pray. Because that's part of hearing God's voice. If you're not willing to do that on the moment, because that's God hearing God's voice. If someone reach out to you for prayer, that is hearing God's voice. This person is yearning to hear. Because what do people want when they say, will you pray for me? They want to hear God's answer to the situation. They want the revelation. They want the healing. They want the miracle. They want the outcome. Where do I find that outcome, that healing, that miracle? And you're in God's voice in the situation. I truly trust that you heard me tonight.
as a facilitator, I have to get the person I'm dealing with, the people in the group. And that's why I said hearing God's voice is something that you should. It's one of those things that will come up. It will, in every quarter, it will come up at least once or twice or three times. If it doesn't, go make a point of making sure that it is something that you bring in the teaching. Because we need to get the people to talk. We need to get the people in the group to talk about hearing God's voice. A lot of people are afraid to talk about the subject. A lot of people are afraid to talk about the subject because they've never heard God's voice. I told you earlier in the teaching, I've never heard God's voice as an external voice talking to me. But I can tell you specific times, and I have a journal where I can go show you times where God spoke to me, where I know it was God saying this. But I didn't hear it externally. I heard it, heard it internally. I heard it in the spirit. I heard it. I heard the voice. But I didn't hear it as an outside voice that was outside of me. That's how I hear God's voice. And on big things. And most of the time, contrary to what I would have done in this situation. Because God is not bound to the, rule, to the rules and laws and natural things that you and I are bound to. He's above that. But are you expectant of that? And tonight I would like to leave you with an expectancy to hear God's voice. It doesn't matter where you are at the moment. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Go find someone that can pray with you. If you getting to hear God's voice, if you, if, you, if you want to hear God's voice, you haven't done it yet, go find the people around you. Go find go godly counselors that can help you. Maybe they can help you in hearing God's voice in the situation first and foremost. And from there on, you will hear it yourself. Lord, we just come and I just want to prayerfully come to you tonight, Lord, and say, Lord, we yearn to hear your voice in our daily walk, in our daily thinking, in our daily doing. Lord, we need to hear you. We need to have you in us as an audible voice. Holy Spirit, help us, guide us, assist us, that we will always, in every situation, our first thought be back to you, Lord. Our first recourse, resource will be you. That in everything, we will turn to you before we turn to the natural, before we turn to what's happening in the world, before we find the answer in people. Lord, allow us, Holy Spirit, quicken our mortal bodies, our minds to be in line with what you want for us. So that we go to you first. Lord, so that we can get rid of this mind that wants to reach out to what the world can offer us as an answer. But that we will get the godly answer with you. That we will always push everyone back to the Holy Spirit. Go find the answer. I will prayfully pray with you. Let's pray. And we pray, Lord. Allow us, Holy Spirit, to be vigilant and pray immediately. To pray. And to pray what we find in our, in our spiritual man at that very moment. So that we can press in with you. So that we can hear you. Lord, we thank you that you are alive. And that you are talking to us in this day. We thank you for that. Holy Spirit, we, we petition you to allow us to hear the voice. We know you are talking, God. Holy Spirit, we petition you to allow us to hear. Help us to hear and to discern, to know that voice. Because Jesus says, my people will know my voice. I know them. They know my voice and I know them. Lord, we want to know your voice and because we want you to know us. Holy Spirit, help us with this. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I bless you. Thank you for visiting with us tonight. I bless you with an amazing, great weekend. Be expectant of hearing God. Be expectant of hearing what God has in store for you. Because I promise you, it will be way above what you can ever think or plan for yourself. I bless you.